All right, so I have a student asking about finite state machines. Um, so the first thing about a finite state machine is that you have to understand um, what the logic is behind the, the, the machine. Um, finite state machines generally are AI. So in this case, um, say we have a soldier, um, and the soldier would be the main, let me grab a different color here. Uh, so this soldier would be um, what would be considered a uh, um, just a patrol soldier. So basically what we have is this patrol soldier and he starts in an idle mode. All right? And in this idle mode, things he does um, would be look for enemy, Um, he might wonder, and he might do, I don't know, um, he might do a secondary action like, uh, uh, I don't know, smoke, cigarette, uh, something, something along the lines like that. So under that, so he's looking for the enemy. Um, so he's looking for the enemy. If he sees an enemy, he's going to do an action. So if he sees an enemy... He's going to he's going to attack, right? So then, basically, he moves into what's called an attack mode. All right, and basically, he is going to attack with his gun. I'll say gun. So he's going to shoot with his gun. Um, he's either a going to hit or he's going to miss. So either way, he's got to, um, when he attacks with his gun, he's got to subtract one bullet from his um, repertoire. Now, if he hits the enemy um, and the enemy dies, then he goes back to idle. If he hits the enemy and the enemy is alive, He is going to go back and attack with the gun again. So if he misses, he will continually go back and fight with the gun. Okay. So basically, this is the logic system behind the AI. Now, there's a lot more commands and a lot more things like this that you can you can add in there. So say he when he attacks, he will. Um, Basically, the, if he attacks the enemy and the enemy is still alive, he's going to attack again until the enemy dies, of course. But there's also the aspect that an enemy could attack him, so basically you need a death. Basically, if the hit, if HP is less than zero, then remove mesh. Or you go into the, the, the dead dead pose, things like that. Um, so there can be a lot of other other things in here. The wonder aspect, he could wonder, um, you basically can put a node in there and he can wonder from a radius of that node. Or he can basically follow a path going around in a, in a hallway. Um, so there's a, not, a lot of things he can do for wondering. So if the wonder is, um, you know, he's, he moves 50 feet out, out um, and if he then goes for the look for the enemy and if he sees no and if he doesn't see the enemy so this is where no enemy he goes back to wonder mode or he could go back to idle mode um, and then he could wonder some more um, at some point if you want to add more personality to the character you can have him smoke a cigarette he can clean his gun he can do a number of different things so basically what's happening in this flowchart is and, and this works for any character um, basically what you want to do is you want to create your states and your states are your idle modes your attack modes your death modes um, things like that 
Um, and then you have conditions for each mode. So basically you're moving around, you're attacking with the gun, you're, you're doing something um, and under specific parameters. Now, if the enemy attacks, um, and so say someone's attacking him, so we could say injured mode, and if, if HP is less than half, then you want to run. Uh, we'll say flee. So basically with that, you know, he can flee now. Um, he can try and get away. Um, you know, there's a couple things he can do while he's fleeing. He can pause to go back and attack, or he can just try and run for the hills. Um, and then if he's safe, so if he's, if you die, basically goes to the death mode. If it, um, so I'll just have that go there. If it, if he's saved, then he goes back to the idle mode. Maybe in the idle mode, you can put if the HP is less than one half of total HP, then heal. So maybe he'll heal at that point in time. Um, so there's a number of different parameters, and this the more the more complex that the finite state machine is, the more realistic the character is. Whereas the less complex, so under this idea, um, I've given no sight parameters, so I could have my enemy here, and I could have my my player here and I could have sight parameters so I could say hey if you're gonna look at a 45 degree and at 50 feet out the this is my my visual sight range now if I didn't put a sight range that basically means I could say oh hey there's a guy over here I'm going to shoot him now he becomes this high range sniper target so it's really dependent on what you're looking at. Um, if you look at uh, an example is uh, if you go to T, uh, Torque Game Engine, TGE, um, and look at the AI that's submitted with that one, um, the orc basically will shoot you across the entire landscape. You can run, and as long as you're visible, he'll shoot you. Um, so that's, that's an aspect that you want to look at. Whereas other game engines have a little bit more logic involved, um, and they're not as, they will only shoot the closest objects, like if you look at the Unreal engine, um, or UDK, and you look at the bots in there, they have a lot more parameters built in. So they are more likely to attack within 50 feet, or they'll attack the nearest enemy. They have, they have different parameters in there. And that's basically what the FSM is. All right. I hope that helps.